you just, it's all about discipline. I mean, I, I obviously figured out, talked to you, kind of knew the model, and you polish it as you go on. But it's just, honestly, I just gave myself just straight tunnel vision, and it's, it's all about repetition. What's going on, guys? Welcome to yet another episode of Talking Lots. I am stoked for this one. I'm really excited uh, to bring on our special guest here, uh, the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, Mikey Saps. What is happening, Mikey Saps? Not much, man. I appreciate that intro. It was uh, yeah. that was nice, dude. dude. <laughs> so, first question to you know kick this off: Has anyone ever told you that you sound like Matthew McConaughey? I've I've gotten that uh, over the years for sure. Uh, funny story is, uh, obviously after the Christmas party and Todd, you know, made it a big thing. Uh, back in ninth grade, I had an English teacher that loved my voice, and you know, we would have to read books, you know, out loud in the class. And you know, typically protocol is you, you know, pick on somebody else and they read. Sure. I had to read every single day every page every paragraph because she just wanted to listen to my voice so she just was, wanted to hear the all right all right all it was right. it it was it so uh that was awful but uh yeah yeah over the years i gotta get a little bit love his movies though for sure dude he's just such like a smooth <clears throat> talker right it's like smooth like elegant luxury like luxurious Luxur right for sure for like sure i just i gotta buy a lincoln at this point to, you gotta buy a lincoln that's to cap sure. it off like when I think when I think Matthew McConaughey, I think I think uh, Mikey Saps. Can would you be willing to do the uh, to do the thing? Yeah, yeah, I can give uh, I can give one in, and I don't practice this a lot to be honest. You know, but right. uh, go ahead. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> dude, I love that. <laughs> but legit though, when when we first interviewed you, I was like, dude, this guy sounds like like we got off that the was interview. The first thing I was like, this guy sounds exactly <laughs> like Matthew McConaughey. That's all you got out of the interview. No, 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 no. I was That's like, this it. guy's a stud, and we need to hire him like ASAP. Uh, uh, so but no, for for those of you, of you guys who don't know, uh, Mikey Saps, Mike Sapienza, uh, on our team here is uh, a stud of a salesperson. He is, uh, uh, you know, just. An all-around great dude, Appreciate pretty solid it. hockey goalie. I would. Uh, you you had some goals on me the other day. I wish I could get back, but uh, yeah, not bad. Used to be better. Yeah, well, yeah. and and not to mention, he sounds like Matthew McConaughey. So total package. Um, total package. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, dude, you've been a great addition to the team, and I've you know I've loved working with you. You bring a lot of value to the sales team here. You're a hunter, dude. Like you go out, you hunt like. Anyone can walk into your into your office and just see like just a giant whiteboard of all kinds of different prospects, all kinds of different people that you are going after that you're trying to capture new business, and it's it's just super encouraging to see like that level of like you know of, of sales and prospecting and hunting, and and you're very methodical about it too. Like, you know, when you first started, it was like you know run and gun, and you just got to get the reps in. But um, I would love to take you back, uh, take it back a little bit, you know, to when you you know first got started in your career, like you weren't always in paving, correct? You were no, no. So like the big sales start uh, was probably like 12, 13 years ago. I worked for uh, a large nationwide roofing contractor. Kind of worked up, uh, didn't know much about roofing. Um, kind of worked my way up the ranks. Uh, relocated the family a few times, uh, which is tough. But it was a it was a big company and kind of worked my way into a sales role. So I never, my older brother honestly is is through and through your your sales uh, sales guy by definition for sure. And I never, I guess, thought myself as as that role because I would watch him over the years. Um, but as I went through the ranks with the uh, with the roofing company, kind of, I found my spot for sure. Sure. Uh, you know, I'm a I'm a guy that gets bored easy, so uh, I think sales is is the way to go for Keep, me. It keeps you on your toes. Keeps you keeps you want more. Keeps you yeah hunting and trying to 
trying to close a sale. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I found my my niche for sure. For sure, yeah. So, so you didn't you didn't start in sales when you were at that roofing company. No, were... so basically like an estimator, your okay. bottom line estimator. So it's on on roofs, uh, measuring, quoting. Um, so you were almost like the project manager estimator, like salesperson would exactly. would bring in the lead and then you'd work with them to yep. like okay. Yeah, so we had a territory. Uh, you had one. We'll call them sales uh pro they called them project manager well, he's your main sales guy then you had a guy that sold uh kind of small service service work small roofing work then they had an estimator which where i started um so you just kind of assist uh the day-to-day -day for the sales guy and kind of work together and and mine was uh you know a great teacher and kind of let me start running with things mm -hmm. um so i i got a small taste of you know how the business works you know how to find business um, we didn't have the best territory so i think that kind of started my uh prospecting career sure. you had yeah you i had, had we had to and yeah. uh yeah if uh if if the phones weren't ringing you were knocking on doors for sure so uh and that's kind of where it, where it went worked up my ranks and uh so ultimately, uh, turned into a sales guy for them for, for many years and, uh, yeah, made a switch over to the, the pavement side of things. And sure. I love it. It's been uh, a great choice for sure. Yeah. Did, did you have any, like, great mentors over at, you know, at that other company or anyone that really yeah. kind of took you under their wing? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, my buddy Nate Thompson was the first sales guy that, that kind of uh, – showed me the ropes and and he was very trustworthy i don't know if it's with everyone but uh, i think that helped me grow a lot because he he kind of you know he didn't micromanage you know you kind of learn the ropes by just doing the day-to-day -day stuff yourself yeah. and you stepped out of line you know you let you know but uh yeah he was a big part i think a lot of people don't grow or don't find their you know true skill because they might get micromanaged to a point where they just they can't see it for themselves and you know I think doing that failing by myself winning by myself uh, obviously he was there but that that really helped kind of shape it yeah for sure yeah that's that's one of the things I've learned man like I uh, you know I'm young right I'm mm -hmm. 25 and so I always get the question like how do you like move up so quickly? And I'm, my answer is, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that like have contributed, but like I have great mentors, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. who invest a lot of time into me. And uh, through that, <clears throat> you know, I found people who, who are doing what I want to do. And I've been able to, uh, you know, learn from them, sit with them. It, you know, it's almost like osmosis, right? Like I sit in the same room with them. I sit with watch. Them. Yeah. Like Brian S he's, you know, the, probably the greatest example of, yeah mentor of mine that like you know he's been able to just to pour into me for several years and you know through that I just pick it up and he's allowed me to fail I, dude I've you know there's times where I've failed I've mm -hmm. fallen flat on my face like and uh you know I come to him and ask for help and you know he's able to show me how to you know get out of a certain situation or you know work through a situation really and uh that's like the biggest thing man is like find someone who you know for me it's like find somebody who is doing the thing that you want to be doing Learn from them. 100%. Watch them daily. And I, I think you were telling me you guys were in one office room, you yeah. know, yeah. just side by side. I mean, what's better than that? To see every move, every reaction, how they react in certain situations. Bro, I would, I would sit on calls. <laughs> or, I, you know, I'd sit on calls and, and just Brian, listen. Or like Brian would be on calls and we would be like, as far as you and I are away right now. and. And I would just listen in on the calls and I would listen to how Brian handled, you know, certain scenarios and situations. And, you know, that was right when COVID was starting too. So like we were sitting in a, you know, yeah. in a yeah. in a tiny little office and, you know, learn you know, learning that states are shutting down. Well, how are we gonna handle this? How are we gonna move through this? How are we gonna, you know? Yep. So just all of that, like I just learned so much. It's huge. The, that's the biggest thing is, yeah, same with me. I was able to watch, and I would go in his office. He'd be like, let's, let's call this guy. Let's, let's, yeah. let's get him on the phone. And you just sit there and just kind of listen. And, I mean, to this day, I, I just listen. I mean, you know, I, our offices are close. Uh, I hear you on calls. You're great. 
I hear Brian on, on calls, you know, in between things. And uh, I'm always listening and learning, you know. Sure. It's uh, just kind of bolding it. Yeah. So uh, that's, yeah, that's the biggest thing. And uh, I think when people get micromanaged too much, you, then the, the learning capacity just drops far. So yeah. I was... I was able to do that, and then obviously my brother, uh, we're really close. Um, he still works for, for that nationwide roofing contractor, and he's, uh, yeah, he's been great. Anytime, uh, I mean, anything sales-wise, questions, deliveries, anything before I go into a meeting, you know, I, I'll shoot him a call and just mm -hmm. say, hey, what do you think about this, you know, and give him a little little uh, cliff notes of the yeah. situation and yeah he's always got an answer so uh, that was always helpful for sure sure yeah so how is uh, you know obviously the roofing and the and the you know paving world they're very similar you know same very. customers yep. very similar <clears throat> uh, types of projects just one is you know one's up on a roof and the other's down on the ground pretty much yeah uh, it you know going from sales from uh, the roofing world to here is there anything that like sticks out that's different or is it honestly um no the the concept is the same like you said you're selling to the same guys you're looking for the same people uh in regards to decision makers or um you know people within the companies um i'd say the biggest thing when i first started i'm like i know not a lot about asphalt and the in with roofing now the same way i was just like you know if you ask your average person about commercial roofing and be like well it can't be that hard it might be only one roof or, or one type of roof i mean mm -hmm. there that is completely far from the truth uh so i was nuances, nervous right? like, yeah like little things and uh I remember Todd showing us the videos. Uh, he, he had like three videos on there, and he's like, "Well, that's that's about it." Was like, it. it was like, "What is seal coat? Yeah, <laughs> what are asphalt repairs? <laughs> How are they made?" <laughs> and I remember coming out of there, and I'm like, "Man, I, there's got to be more to it." And obviously, there is. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I'm learning slowly still, uh, and it's it's great having you next door, mm -hmm. and then everybody down the hall. You know, I can just walk and say, yeah, "I just uh, you know." I said yes to this person, but like, what did I say <laughs> yes to? You know, it's sure. kind of one of those things. But uh, same style, same, you know, with the project management portion, it's very, very similar. You know, uh, the construction industry is, yeah, it's same, same issues, uh, just same daily stuff. So a lot of very similar, um, but yeah, obviously there's your different, different things. Sure. Yeah. And, and you know, it's crazy, man. Like, actually, it's not even that crazy. It's just, you know, people are people, you know, selling is relationships, especially in this industry. You yep. know, um, I think, you know, if you can learn sales, uh, you know, you can sell anything. If you understand people and that like selling is a relationship based thing and it's not a transactional thing. Like I always say, sure, there's the transaction that's made. Yes. But at the end of the day, it's all about the relationship with the person. And, yep. and you're great at building those relationships and, and prospecting and finding those new relationships too. And like curating the new relationships, like you are a beast at that. Appreciate and so, you know, if you can do that in the roofing industry, you can absolutely do it in the, in the asphalt paving industry. And, you know, the other piece of it too is on the project management side, you know, when there's issues that arise, you know, issues arise in, in both, in, in all construction projects, right? There's never, not going to be a project that, you know, yeah, something small goes, you know, whatever, sideways or wrong or whatever. And it's just how you deal with those issues. Uh, you know, it's the same way in the roofing industry as mm -hmm. it is in the paving industry, as it is in the landscaping, as it is in the, you know, metal. In, I mean, whatever kind of construction okay. industry you can think of or, you know, industry as a whole, like just how you deal with those and how you communicate those issues, like it's all the same. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, um, you know, in reference to the, the new construction job here locally. Mm -hmm. uh, same, <clears throat> same issues uh, Challenge, with right? the roofing side. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it couldn't have been more <laughs> blueprinted on what I was used to, on yeah. kind of what could happen, what was going to happen, and uh, 
Yeah, and like you say, you just kind of you have that relationship. You work through it. Um, you know, every company is not perfect, and uh, you understand that. And I, I, the biggest thing I have always been good at with issues, and I think people respect it, and I feel like they're, you know, better. You both work better through it is just owning up to, hey, we made a mistake. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do to fix it. Mm -hmm. And the more you push, well, that's not our fault. That's not, you know, you did this, the worse it gets. It's just take ownership yeah. and let's say, hey, how do we move forward? Well, one of the things I learned uh, pretty early on uh, was if you're going to bring a problem, bring a solution to. Like if you're going to bring up a problem, at least bring some sort of solution. It might not be the solution that you end up, you know, taking and running with, but at least it's a step in the right direction. It might it might create conversation uh, to figure out what the actual solution is. So if there's a problem if like, hey, we messed up this job. Like, here's the solution. Okay, well, it might lead to a better solution. It might lead to a different solution, but at least you brought something to the table. So you're not just saying, all right, we got a problem. We're putting our hands up. Uh, I don't know what to do. Not our problem. You know, not our fault. Yeah. Not our fault. You know, like, that's what a lot of people unfortunately do. And so if it's, if you have a problem, like bring the solution. 100%. You know? Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. And it's honestly, yeah, like there's, I've said sorry for things, you know, I wasn't even a part of, but <laughs> it's just, you know, let's, let's own up to it. Let's, uh, let's admit what happened, wrongs, whether it's your fault or not. And yeah, let's figure out where do we go from here. And sure. I think people respect that. Um, a lot. I think it goes a long way for sure. hundred percent. So, you know, this past year, 2023, I've, you know, you came in in what, August? Was it August? Uh, yeah, it? Late July. Oh, late think. July. I think it was late July. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Dude, time is flying, bro. Um, yeah, we're in December now. It's, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, I know. It's odd. It is nuts. <laughs> um, but I've, you know, I've watched you just, just put your head down. You are, you're one of those dudes that just, you know, you, you, go in your office, you shut the door. <laughs> I don't think I've seen you in the other side of, of the office maybe two or three times, uh, you know, chatting with people because you are just in your office working, you're grinding. Um, you know, you're just putting your head down. And I just, I applaud you for that because it's not easy. I've been there, I've done that. And you are very disciplined when it comes to like the day to day. Um, for, for anyone that's in our company here at the Pavement Group or even outside who might be coming up in their careers or maybe want to move into sales. Uh, is there any advice that you would give them, um, you know, with the knowledge that you know, with the success you've had in the roofing industry and the success that you're now having in the paving industry at the pavement group? Is there any advice that you would give uh, those people that are maybe wanting to take that leap? Yeah, honestly, I appreciate the, the kind words. And, and yeah, it was, uh, uh, you kind of gave me the rundown to say, you know, obviously I knew the role coming in. Um, and then I, I remember like day one, I was looking, you know, getting logged into email and, and you know, throughout the day, I don't think I got one email. And I'm like, well, how do you change this? It's, you just, it's all about discipline. I mean, I, I obviously figured out, talked to you, kind of knew the model and you polish it as you go on, but it's just, Honestly, I just gave myself just straight tunnel vision, and it's it's all about repetition and and calls, whether it's cold calls, warm calls, hot uh, calls, hot calls, <laughs> taking any little bite you get, um, just emails. Just it's it's all about the more you do, you're gonna have success eventually. I mean, it could be. Uh, I always talk to you about my probability of getting somebody to call back or email back is way less than 1%. It's something, but what's that mean? It means I got to do triple. It's probably you know? higher than 1%. It now. could be. I, I just like, feel like well, it's maybe, maybe when you first started, it was probably 1%. For sure. But like yeah. now I bet it's way higher because you've taken the things and you've tweaked them. Like when you first started, you know, you and I sat down and you said, all right, like, how, how do you do this? How do you start? And my, the thing I said to you was like, you know, prospecting, you, you know, you understand how sales works for you, dude, you just got to get the reps in. 
Let's get 100 contacts a day, 150 contacts a day. Yep. Let's, you know, shotgun approach to start. That's the key, to start as a salesperson. Let's get the reps in. Let's figure out what's working, what's not working. You did that. You got some early success. And now you're to the point where, okay, you've gotten a ton of reps in. You've gotten deals in the door. You've got customers now who, uh, you know, we're going to do business with as we go into next year and the following year and the year after that. And so now how do we hone that in and get it really dialed in so that, uh, you know, it's not a shotgun approach. And I think that's kind of where you're at now, right? Like For sure, for sure. Now I still keep that shotgun approach in downtime because I, sure. I know the success it brought and how it worked before. So it's just going to, it will continue. Yeah, it, that's all it is, volume. And, and honestly, I don't do anything special. It's just I kind of have the, the blue-collar work ethic. It's, uh, you know, I'm not sending any crazy emails or saying anything special on the phone. You know, a lot of it, to be honest, it's, it's timing. Uh, when you get with these people, a lot of them say, oh, yeah, I do have something that's coming up. You know, I sure. just happen to hit them up, but it's the reps. It all comes down to the reps. Um, and honestly, it's just have a goal in mind, have it set day in and day out. Mm. And when you're tired and you're ready to quit, do more. Do more. That's the power of one more, brother. One more. I love Every it. Every time. Um, uh, throughout this year, was there any um, was there anything that like really stuck out to you that was really memorable? Like I know you know you were here since since you said July. Is there anything that was like like that's a memorable? Like within the pavement group yeah, here? Yeah, or, or outside. Yeah, I, honestly, the way you guys, you know, treated me and, and everything and, and the way Brian is and, you know, it's, it's, it's truly, I know a lot of places say it, family atmosphere, but it, yeah. it truly feels like it here. And, and granted, I may not enjoy it as much because I'm not walking around just, you know, getting in. Sure. I, obviously, I know... Uh, yeah, I, I was starting from from zero, so it's yeah. uh, uh, maybe over the years we'll we'll get out a little more, but there's definitely still still work to do. But honestly, I I I did have a couple other roofing opportunities kind of yeah. lined up, and I remember calling Todd and and say, hey, I'm I'm out driving east, I'm I'm about to meet up with somebody because it was uh, with another roofing company, and I was like, you know, I want to come work with you guys are we good and he's like yeah you have my word and, and he's like we, we won't have an offer letter today but uh we'll send it over so uh yeah glad i took that leap and uh it, it's been great yeah you know going to penguin games and just mm -hmm. uh yeah you get we had the christmas party last week which yeah. which was great everyone's super friendly family oriented i know uh yeah I know I'm probably the quiet guy in the group, but uh, yeah, it'll come. Dude, you're one of the hardest working, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to have to pull you aside yeah. and uh, go hit the putting green with you yeah. a little, little bit more often. Yeah, huh? for sure. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. going to play uh, next year. Maybe I'll play a little better than we did at the uh, <laughs> at that outing. But, uh, yeah, I was a mess that day. But uh, I need some lessons. I was worse, so. dude. It was bad. That was bad. <laughs> Well, shoot. Well, I got one final question for you. What is, uh, what's the number one thing that you're looking forward to uh, as we roll into next year? You know, 2024, uh, it's an exciting year. It's, it's going to be your first full year here at the Pavement Group. Is there anything that, you know, either here or outside of the Pavement Group, anything that you're like, that's the thing. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, honestly, uh, getting one full, full, uh, full, full year in sure. is, is going to be good. Uh, you know, as a salesperson and, and you always – you know, you're always looking at your own numbers, and, and obviously I come in in July, so, uh, you know, you set those goals for yourself, and it's usually on a year basis. So uh, I'm excited to, to go off on January 1 and, and see, what, uh, see what it brings for 2024. I think I, I think I got a little nice starting base, and I just got to keep going, and uh, hopefully uh, we hit some records. Dude, hundred percent. I think it's gonna happen. Yeah, looking forward yeah to it. definitely looking forward to it. So. Well, shoot, man. Well, we need one more, Matthew <laughs> McConaughey. Come on, <laughs> I gotta Let's get. Hear it. Some, I gotta get some more lines from him. Let's hear it. All right, all right, all right. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you, brother. Thank you for joining. This was yeah, an absolute 
pleasure. It's been, you know, it's been amazing working with you over the past handful of months and uh, really looking forward to this next year and, and you know, beyond that, what, what that looks like and what that's going to bring. Yeah. Really excited. I appreciate it. I'm excited too, man. Awesome, big dog. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Talking Lots. We will uh, we'll be back uh, next time on Talking Lots. Talk soon. Peace.